It's time. We're here. We're going to be doing a comprehensive VimRC walkthrough. So I've been using LARBs, this whole system, Arch Linux, command line, utilities, Vim, all this stuff for, mm, I don't know if it's been a year yet, but it's been a, it's been a while. Uh, I've, been, I've been hacking on it for several months and I'm not going back. I, I love this way too much. I am now bothered by having to use Windows at work. I really wish we could just use Linux. It's so much easier to do certain things. Like I was just trying to do some basic file manipulations, just ls all this stuff into a file, copy the file names, paste that into something. Like, oh my God, it would have been like three commands and a couple pipes in the command line, but on Windows, it's just bleh. Thankfully, some of it I think I was able to replicate with PowerShell, but I mean, still PowerShell is, I think after using Bash, it's PowerShell is gross, but I digress. VimRC. I have a lot of stuff in my VimRC, but I really, really like Vim. I like everything I can do with Vim. I like the extensibility of Vim. I like all the custom stuff, and I love plugins. So let's go through everything I have line by line, and let's tell you what's in my VimRC. So first, my first section is just, um, I mean, I got my nice little figlet bubble character Neo Vim heading here. Um, I have each of my sections listed off like this, um, like that. And the first section I have is plugins. So I have, uh, I'm using Vimplug, and in my plugins, I have several sections of plugins. So I have some uh, general Vim related stuff and system utilities for Vim. Um, I don't use Startify right now. I have Startify off. I was really enjoying it because I could just open Vim and it would give me a list of like my my 10 most recently edited files. And that was really cool to just go back to a file I was recently editing if I need to go back to it for whatever reason. But because I'm using VimWiki again, it doesn't seem to play nice with VimWiki. It, it was messing with actually going to my VimWiki index file because I would do my hotkey uh, mod V to go to VimWiki. And then it would... I guess I think it was trying to open Startify or Startify wasn't opening or I don't know. It, I just turned it off because Startify is not like a critical one for me. So I just don't care. Multiple cursors. This is one I actually, because Luke has in his dot files has since removed a lot of his, uh, I think it was snippets, code snippets for like Markdown, HTML, LaTeX. Um, I actually dug through some of the prior commits and grabbed those because I did want them. I'm going through some of them, deleting, changing, and messing with them for what would suit me. But one of the ones uses, used something interesting. It was actually um, using, I guess, like a delimiter, tab stops, something or other. Um, it's the multiple cursor stuff, like the type that you see in VS Code. But it's like the VS Code snippets where you have the dollar sign number notation for... Um, where if you press tab, it'll take you to that new area. You start typing, you press tab again, you jump to the new area. But if you use the same dollar number and like um, dollar sign one, and you have that into two or three separate locations or whatever, you're typing the same thing in three locations at the same time. Multiple cursors lets you do that with a specific um, function call, delimiter thing. We'll get to it in my LaTeX uh, snippets later, but it's actually one that Luke set. And now that I see how he did it with like writing this out, the syntax of it, I'm definitely gonna be making a lot of use of this because it's really cool to be able to type multiple things in separate locations. Um, really useful if you're typing the same thing twice. Next one I have is VIFM. Um, I don't, this is one that just came with uh, LARBs by default. Uh, I think it just lets you use VIFM as a file picker. But I mean, I just leave it in there. I use VIFM, um, I like it. Restore. Restore was what was one of the things that was missing for me. I was trying to mess with my code folding and you know, like folding your code like this. Well, if I save and exit my file, typically the folds will unfold and you're back to your original full view. But restore view, this one actually lets you, it, ha it makes like a, like a backup file or some crap like that. And it lets you remember the folds. So this is really useful for me because I like to fold my stuff and then not have to look at everything all at once. So restore view is what let me do that when I have a code folding. Airline for this airline styling down here. i3 for my i3 config syntax highlighting. Um, SXHKD for simple X hotkey daemon. Um, this is again just for like 
config file syntax highlighting these are just why they're just general general like they just some of the the pipe work and the guts of stuff now for focus mode so i can use um, my leader f for focus mode and for that i am using the same thing as luke i'm using goyo but there's also this other one called limelight so if i'm in my focus mode limelight will actually let me highlight certain sections of code and it will pop out the color. Now it looks ugly because I have some like long comments in that section, but if I'm like over in here, you know, I can do that, I can do that, and you see how it highlights certain pieces of it. I like this because the whole point of Goyo is focus mode. Well, this lets me focus on not only just a narrow view, no like relative line numbering, it's all in the center, but now it's also centered and highlighted on a specific focus area. I really enjoy this. And that's activated when I go into Goyo. So Goyo and Limelight for that. Um, I have several Nerd Tree uh, sections. Um, Nerd Tree itself, Nerd Tree Git. So if I was in um, Nerd Tree and I made a change to my uh, VimRC, so let's just say, you know, I can type, uh, uh, let's just do a comment, hello, save it. Um, my file has now changed. I guess it's not going to do it right now. Mm -mm. But typically, uh, nerd nerd tree git that what that one will do is actually um, highlight with a single icon next to uh, specific things. Like, let me see if I can go to my one of my git repos. Uh, da -da -da. I think I haven't edited anything recently. But it'll actually like place like uh, icons next to these files and it'll be like an asterisk if it um, has a change and isn't staged yet. Um, there's a couple different like things, but it's mostly for usage of like, like if you're in VS Code and you see you modified a file or if you staged a file for committing, um, it's that type of stuff. I also have um, with the nerd tree stuff, I have nerd tree syntax highlighting and dev icons because you can see I have these icons for markdown documents, but now they're also colored. Both of those are two separate pieces of functionality provided by those two plugins. So all of my nerd tree stuff is nerd tree itself, nerd tree git for the git status icon stuff. Uh, syntax highlighting for the color of the notes or the the icons and then dev icons themselves just so i can see the file types because i think it's pretty um i have a whole section for tpope related plugins i think everyone has a section like this um, commentary to comment out code of various languages i map this to control c because i just like that i think the default is like gcc or something but if i do control c it'll comment it out and toggle that i really like that plugin because it's easy to especially with like html comments where you have to have something on both sides it's annoying to type that um, control c comment it out done vim surround um, for changing tags i mean i think i would mostly i really tend to use this with uh, html tags but i honestly have not really used this one too much but i keep it around because i i know one day if i get really into development of some type or other or really do, start doing something i'm gonna want this one uh, Vim Markdown for um, syntax highlighting in the Markdown code fences, essential for me, especially with VimWiki now that I'm back in VimWiki from Joplin. Uh, I want my fenced out code to actually have syntax highlighting instead of just being like all purple the way it currently or the way it was in my uh, setup. I have a section for our Markdown completely or just general markdown stuff. Um, these three right here are all just for compiling our markdown from Vim. So the way that Luke has like his uh, compiler script, um, I've ripped off the auto compiler script from watching his video because he doesn't have it in the dot files. I don't know if he had it before, or if he removed it, but using the um, enter um, local bin auto. So using the enter and enter compiler um, to compile an auto compile like an R markdown or markdown document. Um, that's why I'm using all this stuff is so this way I could easily just use R markdown in Vim instead of uh, R studio if I so felt like it. Honestly, if I'm doing anything with R related, I'm probably in R studio because it's like, it's like Vim for plain text editing. Like why would you not use it? Um, it's the perfect tool for the perfect job. 
Now, I also have Markdown Folding. This I, I was messing around with this today. I had this before and I think I removed it, but I added it back in. I still am having trouble getting my, um, eight, my Markdown headers to fold correctly. And I'm not sure what the problem is, so I'm still working on that. Tabular is really awesome for markdown tables with the pipe characters. So I have um, a file, let's see, uh, it's in git, and it's in r, package reviews. So in my um, r package review series, I review several r packages. Now this looks horrible because a lot of the links are really long, but you can see that all of these like pipe characters, I mean, I know this is really small, but all these pipes are lined up and everything is easily ordered. If I was gonna make an, a table in our markdown or a markdown, then using the pipe characters for your own custom markdown table can get really ugly really fast if you don't have them like all aligned. Tabular aligns them for you. So if I was gonna do something, um, I don't think it'll work in the vimrc file, but... Um, Oops, that's why. So if I was gonna go like up in here and I was gonna make a table, I could easily just do you know pipe, header one, header two, pipe again. Oh, it already even starts a new row for me. I can go again, 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 again. Excellent. So this way you can actually even tab through it as well. This, this is awesome. If you're gonna do tables in Markdown, get tabular. I love this plugin. It's incredibly useful. Um, for, oh yes, uh, window resizing. So if I was gonna have Nerd Tree open, um, it you can see it's taken up some space here, but if I use my, my hot my keys to go control over to this one and back and forth, um, I can actually open up a V split. Now watch what happens. I have three windows open, Nerd Tree and the same file twice. But when I use my control HJKL keys to switch between them, these two plugins allow this animation and switching, the movement and the animation. I can go here and it stretches. This um, animation and stretching of the, um, of the view is done by um, Cam Spears, Cam Spears, uh, his two, his or her, whoever it is, um, their two plugins, Lens and Animate, really cool. I mean, it's kind of like extra fluff, honestly, but I really like it because sometimes I have a couple splits open and I wanna have something larger instead of having to share the equal amount of screen real estate between a single file. If I'm focused on one, let me look at the other. Um, Git gutter, th oh wait, this one I think is uh, code line changes. Oh no, this one, um, this is not the nerd tree them thing. The nerd tree one actually puts the the icons for git changes in you know, the gutter over here, but in um, Vim over here, you can actually see line changes in uh, the gutter over here. Now, I'm not sure why it's not working on uh, for like that line that I saved right there, but if I add, um, oh, it's because maybe this isn't in Git. I think it's because this one, this actual file is actually in my config and I actually replicated in another repo for um, Git changes. So let's do that. Do, 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 do. And it will actually show you in the gutter um, what it looks like. Here we go. All right, so let's do comment, hello, save it, and maybe I need to exit out again. There we go. So there's an, a staged or an unstaged change right here. So you can see in this little gutter area, we have this little icon. Now what happens if I um, get add everything and then I can exit out of this? Actually, I added it, so now it's, yeah, that's gone again, and it might be, and so if I open Nerd Tree, you can see now I have this little plus icon because it's staged. If it wasn't staged, it, I think it's actually just like an asterisk, so let's unstage it. Um, git rm uh, init. Oops, git rm. Mm -hmm. 
oh, git restore. You can see I don't typically remove things from staging. So then if I um, close this file, open it, nerd tree, it's now just changed instead of staged. So all of this stuff is really, really useful. Um, that should be fine. Yep, back to what it was. Cool. Uh, where was I? Five. Yes. So that was a git gutter. Those um, in the actual Vim interface, gutter changes for each code line for git changes. If you're in a git repo or files in a git repo, really useful. I actually really enjoy that um, as well as I discovered Vim diff recently. So I could actually diff two files, but in Vim, that is really useful as well. Um, Let's see, I got LaTeX stuff. I have VimTech here. I don't think this one is what I'm using anymore. I think I just kept it in because I was I spent like a couple hours trying to get the Luke's autocompiler script to work for LaTeX. It doesn't work for me. Uh, I don't know if I'm doing something wrong, but when I use enter and autocompiler for LaTeX, even though it's going to the compiler script that can handle LaTeX compilation just fine when I do leader C, it doesn't compile. Now, I did find a way that does work, which is this Vim Live LaTeX preview. And when I do that with um, like these documents right here, turn off my face. So I can change like this, um, it says Beamer presentation. I could just do um, hello YouTube. And the only issue is that um, it's actually, it, it slows down my typing. Like if I was gonna go over this and like, Okay, it's updated, but then watch how slow my cursor is when I type these things. Oh, maybe it's faster with Beamer, but when I'm doing a normal like LaTeX compilation in a document, or if I have to do like um, uh, bibliography management stuff and it has to compile multiple times, it's actually a lot slower typing, but you know, you, you kind of pay for that when you have to compile three times or something to have a compiled LaTeX document. So it is what it is, I still find it just as useful. It's fine. I'm over it. Vim Live LaTeX Preview. I like this, and I just mapped it. I used like a um, later on in my sh in my hotkeys. I show how I have leader A, which is typically what is in in LARBs anyways. I th this is what was assigned to auto compiler to auto compile a document. Now my, the auto compiler script with Enter does in fact work with things like Markdown with HTML. Um, plenty of options, but like with Markdown, R Markdown works just fine with all those, especially with like um, Groff, Trough documents, just fine, just fine. But LaTeX, I mapped leader C, if I'm in a tech file, to use this, um, this plugin, which is backslash O for auto compilation for whatever reason. It'll open up the auto compiled screen so you can see what it, the output looks like but then also be auto compiling. And you can toggle this on and off the same way as the auto compiler script. And I just mapped it so that if I'm in a tech file using auto comp compilation, it just uses the same like keystrokes, leader A. Um, as for other files, works just fine. Vimtech, don't know if I need that. Don't, not too worried about it at the moment. Vimwiki. Vimwiki is my best friend now. Friendship over with Joplin. Vimwiki is great. I'm using this again. I actually need to change this comment. Uh, let's see. There, that's better. That looks right. Use VimWiki. Um, I don't currently use uh, COC language server auto completion at the moment. I might start playing with this again and get a language server up and running to make this more of a full fledged IDE, but sometimes it's kind of like, is this too much? Maybe, like, I did install Tech Studio recently for some of the inline documentation stuff with LaTeX, um, but, you know, not really a big fan of that. Like, I really like writing LaTeX and Vim, but if I could get some of that type of stuff where I could tell me, like, what a specific piece of LaTeX markup code is, that's helpful. So I might start messing with the COC plugin later again, but we'll see. Um, I have the Rust language support Vim plugin only because I was messing with Rust for a while. I'm not doing it right now, so I have it I commented out because I don't need it if I'm not writing it. So I just have it turned off, but I retain it. All right, that was just plugins. Let's get into the rest of this. I map my leader uh, is, to, is to comma, so my comma character is my leader character. 
um, cold folding, code folding. Um, this is what I have set for code folding. Um, I was messing with this f for, uh, I don't know, a couple hours and just mind numbingly irritating. Like code folding shouldn't be this difficult to set up. A lot of options for it, but I got code folding set up. So now if it's based on indentation. So if I indent something like this is all indented multiple levels, I could either indent this stuff underneath that or this underneath my headers. This would be really, really optimal, these settings, if you're writing Python, because Python is dealt with um, indentation in white space. So you could easily do good code folding with this in Python. Uh, pair matching, this is all commented out. I was messing with this of like, if I, because I don't like to type all these other closing characters about having, you know, in normal mode, or insert mode, I type a, one of these characters, it types its its complement and then uh, a space holder. So I could easily just, you know, comma, comma outside of that brace, but then it would put me inside the, the, the brace to type. This was working okay for a while, except for when I'm, except for the cases when I don't need it. And those cases, I just had all these extra placeholders and characters just in my way and it was annoying. So I just turned it off. I did turn the braces back on only if I'm in a LaTeX file, because that's when it's just like, there's so many braces in LaTeX, you really just need it. And I might turn on the, um, actually, I don't even need the, the angle brackets for HTML because I just have code snippets for HTML tags. So I don't really even need that either. So this is just if I wanna play around with it and if I need it, um, but it's all turned off. I could turn it back on if I needed it. I have a huge miscellaneous section where I just put all of my non-categorized stuff. Uh, shell check, I don't really use that, I could. Um, this is stuff I left from Luke when I got this uh, Vim diff. So if I was gonna do uh, Vim diffing, I added this. Um, all of this stuff is for Vim diff. Um, and then I have additional options, auto indent, uh, light background. Yeah, just all of this stuff I commented out, or ha I have comments on. Um, unnamed plus for your clipboard, this is incredibly useful. Unnamed plus lets you yank text inside Vim, and then I could go to any other program and just control V, and it pastes that text because it's in, on your clipboard as well as um, the unnamed buffer. Um, Spelling, no compatible because I'm using NeoVim and I don't care about VI compatibility, UTF-8. Uh, the line numbers, relative numbering, that's like a Vim essential. You need that. Tab stop shift. This is the stuff with, um, I was messing with my tab stops and my um, white space. This, this stuff is also irritating to figure out. Now you saw in like my um, uh, get dot config, uh, and vim, Jesus, there we go. So like all this white space, the dots, and then I also have some for like this for um, spaces. Um, I use these characters to, to denote white space. So I have um, tab and spaces set to um, these specific symbols in this. And this is that code to do it right here. Um, I also have expand tab to spaces. I actually should just remove that, but um, yeah. Control C, so this, this is what works with, with T-Pope's commentary plugin for commenting out code of multiple languages. Instead of um, GCC, which I don't like, I can just do Control C and it will comment and toggle comments on any of these code languages that are supported. This I use, um, if you're gonna be highlight or writing code in an 80 character line terminal, or if you need to know what your um, limit is for uh, a single line of text, this is what I use to have a line of like 80 characters. It starts highlighting with like a magenta um, piece of text. So I could be like, where is it? No, it's not appearing, that's strange. Maybe we can find it in another file. Um, maybe not. 
Oh, um, CD or V. All right, here we go. So like on this line right here, we can see that um, at about this point, there's a little magenta looking color square. That lets me know that this is the 80th, 80th or 81st character in um, the document. Now this is really useful because if I have a limitation on how many characters I can use, like 80 characters, which I think is a thing because of terminals, um, this lets me know that I need to like break my line. Um, in this case, this LaTeX template is not breaking the line, but that is what I would use that for. And that is what I use that for. Um, this is the stuff to set my white space characters equal to those symbols. Um, and I actually really like that functionality. I think it's really cool. I turned off my arrow keys in every mode because everyone should do that. You're in Vim, don't use your arrow keys. Um, auto commenting on a new line disables that. Yeah, if I have commented code on a single line and I go to a new line, I probably don't want the same commented code to happen. I might just use control C for my um, commentary thing. Um, turning on and off spelling, if I did leader O, turns on the spelling highlights, leader O turns it off. Um, delete all trailing white space. Uh, when I save, oh yes this, um, when you are saving any of these files, this one will I think automatically compile them or rerun them. That's stuff that Luke added in for standard usage. Um, shortcut files are updated. Renew bash and vim configs with new material. Cool. Yeah, so that that's all stuff I've left in there. Um, w bang bang for saving as sudo. When you're editing a file, it needs to be edited as sudo uh, or sudo, however you pronounce it. Navigating with the leaders. Now, I don't know why Luke removed these. These are like a godsend. I love using this functionality where you use leader character twice and it lets you jump to these placeholders and remove them. It is beautiful. I don't know why he removed them. I I live with these. I, I can't live without these. Um, these for ensuring files are read as a specific type. That's self-explanatory and that's great too. All right, that's all my miscellaneous junk. Some of that stuff, I don't really know what it does. Most of this other stuff, I think I have a pretty good handle on. Uh, limelight, I spoke too soon. I have no idea what this stuff does. But it makes Limelight work and work pretty. And it works when I enter Goyo. So when I'm in Goyo, um, Limelight is working like that. So that is Limelight. Uh, nerd tree, leader N, it opens nerd tree for me. Um, I don't really know what that does too much. Uh, whatever. Um, this I could toggle on and off. This would actually show me, like if I open my files right here, this would be my home directory. I don't see any of my dot files. But if I remove this and I open up um, Vim and I open nerd tree, there's all my dot files. So I have a lot of stuff. I have not been good about managing my home directory and putting all my dot files into dot config. So I leave that commented out so I don't have to see all my dot files when I open nerd tree right now. Um, and nerd tree ignores data store files, um, swap files, and whatever this thing is. And GUI font to Fira code. I think that's for um, the icons in dev icons because when I initially loaded dev icons, it did not have something, it was not displaying the icon looking icons right here correctly. It was displaying like some weird, I don't know, Unicode or ASCII text or some, some weird thing instead of the icons. So I have Fira code on here. And so I just use that and it displays the icons. Can't get ligatures in ST apparently, um, but eh, until, until the day when we can get ligatures, that would be great. And maybe we can, I don't know. I don't think you can get ligatures in ST. If somebody knows, please tell me because I want ligatures. Um, this would be if I wanted to open up nerd tree when I open Vim, but I don't because typically I'm not using nerd tree unless I'm editing multiple files or if I'm doing a editing in a repo. So in the meantime, yeah, I just to leave this commented out, but it's, I leave a lot of commented out things in my VimRC because I might want them later and I don't wanna have to search for them. Um, so yeah, split management, this is all standard. Um, this is from Luke make sure that the splits open in a way that's intuitive and not stupid. 
map control hjkl instead of control w hjkl so you can easily navigate between splits or like nerd tree you know control l h l h so you can toggle back and forth um, and then leader b will open up a vertical split with my bib file like that yeah great nerd tree document compilation this is where i was messing with last night so the compiler script this is standard from luke i stole this from luke's youtube video so i have the auto compiler script using enter this works great with markdown r markdown grof trough documents but latex mm -mm, doesn't work opt out uh, or opt out this will open up a compiled document so if you just compile it you want a preview you can open it and then if you set auto compile then your preview and your document uh, you can edit your document and your preview will update automatically um, text clear to clear out all the excess tech files um, after you're done with a uh, edit or compiling or messing with a tech document it will remove all of the extraneous files log and then the aux file whatever all that stuff is it removes it this tech for when I'm in a tech file I can map leader a instead of like leader a here to do auto compiler script this one just does backslash o which will do the vim live law tech preview auto compiler will open up the preview of the compiled document and it will start auto compilation so if i'm in a tech file i basically just overwrite leader a to do this which works just fine for me uh, vim wiki making sure that it reads my uh, markdown documents to what they should be um, and then my vim wiki directory Syntax is markdown, extension is .md, works great. Um, that's really all there is to VimWiki of her right there. Goyo, these are all default things I got from Luke. Um, Goyo in Neomut, yeah, I, I love Neomut, I use that every day. All right, so that was all my like functionality stuff. Now I have a whole nother large section just for code snippets. I have one here for, I'm, I have this unfolded right now because I've been messing with my LaTeX code snippets because I've basically been learning LaTeX the last few, last week or so. So I've been going through a lot of LaTeX stuff, um, all of Luke's videos, some YouTube videos, learning LaTeX, writing LaTeX, trying reading some of the documentation. And as I figure out what the code snippets do and how I like to use them, I might change them a little bit, um, but I'm also sectioning them off so I have them in sections so I can also just re easily reread them, re-understand them and what they're doing. Um, and I like doing it this way. So I'm still working through all of these, but I have you know uses, use cases, and I understand how all of these are work working. So um, this is all my LaTeX code snippets. There's a lot. I, funnily enough, um, I wrote a snippet that basically, um, I, I grabbed a chunk of lorem ipsum text and then I replaced all the spaces with the space character right here, the way you have to do it in Vim script. And I had a hotkey set so I could just do leader lorem and it would insert this giant block of lorem ipsum text. When, in fact, there's a LaTeX package that Luke used in his example in the next video I watched called blind text that you just do a single backslash blind text and it puts in a chunk of lorem ipsum. So I just completely removed the, the hotkey, but I'm like, oh, great, how, how about that? I got HTML, bold, italic, code. I used code, I, I, I wrote this one because I actually did code in some of my blog posts using um, Luke's LB script that I've modified for my own personal blog. Um, I got leader or headers one through three, paragraph link, blank link, um, list stuff, images, uh, table, table row, data, table header, table, all this stuff is just tables. And then the, ooh, I do use this a lot. I should make one for um, the end dash as well, but the space or the ampersand character. Yes, this is really useful. I need to do one for end dash too. But, um, I also have some bib entry stuff. This is cool if I'm gonna do it manually. I kept these from Luke's stuff, but it's actually, actually I'm using his, um, the script that actually fetches the bib entry from a website and then inputs it into the new document. I do that if I can get, um, if I have like a PDF and I can get the, 
the DOI number or something from it, I'll do that. Sometimes I do have to manually enter a book because I can't find a DOI number for it, but I keep these all in here. Um, markdown, I have um, some regex stuff for my R markdown files in case the file extension is wonky, but markdown, R markdown, you have, um, you know, yank a word and then make it a, its own hyperlink, um, a dashed line, bold, strike through, subtext, super text, uh, footnotes, italics, um, uh, a link, your six headers, and then if in specifically R markdown, I have like a specific R code fence chunk, and then if I'm going to include a picture in R markdown, I could just do this single inline R code knitter include graphics function call to include a graphic. But honestly, if you're in R markdown, include graphics, I just figured out because I'm messing with LaTeX, is the exact same name as the LaTeX function in the graphic X package. So because R markdown can use LaTeX just fine, why not just use the LaTeX option? But you know, you can do this too. That's just fine. And then I have never used the XML stuff here. Um, maybe this is a part of the LB script where it'll actually use these um, snippets. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know if I need these or not. So I, I, I just I just keep it right now. Don't know if I need it, but it's there at the bottoms, two lines. And that's my VimRC. It's long. It's filled with a lot of stuff. Um, it's 356 lines long, but I have combed through this multiple times. I have messed around with stuff, played with stuff, organized it, formatted it, removed, added, changed so much. I love the extensibility of Vim, especially with like plugins. It is beautiful. I love it to death and I highly recommend Vim as an editor. I wish I could just use Linux at work so I could just natively use the command line in Vim for freaking everything, especially with like nerd tree and some of these syntax highlighting and auto completion stuff. Like I would love to do my real development stuff in Vim at work. Sadly, I cannot. Um, but yeah, so that's my VimRC. Let me know what you think. If you have suggestions, if you think there are some plugins I should take a look at, please let me know. I love new plugins and messing with stuff, especially like when I found Limelight and Goyo mixed together. Um, that was just amazing. Just messing with, with this. Beautiful. Love it. So yeah, that's my VimRC. Thanks for watching.